The failed Silicon Valley Bank has a new owner. North Carolina-based First Citizens Bank shares will acquire about $72 billion worth of SVB's assets at a discount of more than $16 billion. The FDC, FDIC, had been looking for a buyer since the federal agency seized control of Silicon Valley Bank back on March 10th after a run on deposits left it insolvent. It was the largest bank failure in the U.S. since the 2008 financial crisis. So to that point, news of that acquisition was received well on Wall Street today as most of the markets saw a jump on the positive side. Craig Bolanos is the founding partner and CEO of Wealth Management Group. Joining us now to talk about this latest news and the overall banking economy. Thanks for being with us. Patrick, it's great to be back. And when banks fail, it is most certainly newsworthy because it causes everyone to lose just a little bit of confidence, does it not? It certainly does. So let's talk about that rally today. Is it just pure profit taking or do you see some medium and long term investment going on here? Well, I think there's some real investment going on because we've come a long way. I think we've learned in a very short period of time that when things go bad, good, bad, or indifferent, the government steps up. We had the bank term funding program, which is essentially getting us to a place where community and regional banks aren't going to have to worry about our run on deposits anymore. We have lots of rhetoric coming out of D.C. that we stand on the cusp of potentially raising FDIC insurance coverage limits. That's good. And we've been able to negotiate what I call a sale of these troubled banks into others, and that creates liquidity and allows markets last week and again today to breathe a sigh of relief, and that's why investors are celebrating with some caution. So, Craig, the reaction has been much better this time around than in 2008, but in terms of parallels of risky investments by CVB and Signature Bank, for that matter, do you see any parallels there? Well, you know, any time that a bank fails, you have to look under the hood and say what was happening. But what I want to make sure everybody knows is this is not 2008, 2009. You know, this is not the savings and loan crises of the 80s. You know, people weren't buying gas and oil wells, and people here certainly weren't buying no income, no asset, non-verified mortgages. Mm -hmm. This is nothing more than a crisis in confidence. And what we've all learned together is, if you don't mind the prop, when everybody can move their money, not by going to a bank, but simply jumping online, banks need to have better control of their liquidity and risk capital. So this is not a repeat of the 08, 09 scenario in any way, shape, or form. And I think that's reflected in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Craig, let's talk about the Fed. We've got about uh, 30 seconds left here. The, uh, they're raising rates to try and stem inflation. I talked to a lot of people of varying occupations here, and we just don't get the Fed these days. Are they dealing with an outdated economics model because it's killing the housing industry and it's certainly hit hurting the big ticket item industry? Well, it is hurting all of us as consumers as the cost of borrowing continues to go up. And I think what we stand is we finally stand on the cusp, we stand on the precipice where the Fed is finally getting ready to pause. There will be no rate hike in April because there is no meeting. We'll see if there's going to be a rate hike in the month of May. But the Fed was too far behind the inflation curve. They needed to do what they needed to do. And now we're just going to wait and see how this affects everybody in the economy, not just as investors, but certainly as consumers. Janet Yellen admitted so much as that months and months ago. Craig, thank you so much. You can check out Wealth Management Group in Inverness and Downers Grove and online at investwithwmg.com.